Hello everyone, I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Thank you for watching today. Um, I, uh, it's about one o'clock, so I want to get started. Um, we're going to do an oil painting today. It's a winter scene and uh, not something I see here in Florida anymore since I moved here a couple years ago, but uh, I've seen a lot of winter scenes in my life. So uh, we're going to try to do this that you've seen on the uh, on the screen here for the last uh, 10 or 15 minutes. And uh, so it ought to be fun. Um, it's a photo I uh, received from uh, one of the other artists I follow, Johannes Floathaus, who has a website called ImproveMyPaintings.com. Um, I purchased about uh, 700 uh, photographs from him, and I've picked out the best ones and trying to uh, create a, some sort of a composition out of those, and uh, so I hope you like it. Um, I want to go over to the uh, my computer now and show you what I did with the photographs and how I uh, uh, have my... Uh, uh, my value map and uh, the sketch that you've seen as well. So I'll be right back. Okay, here we are. I'm at my computer now and uh, I want to show you the photograph that I started with and uh, it was uh, a little bit bigger than the one I ended up with. As you know, I cropped these to fit my 11 by 14 canvas. So I uh, crop, th crop them to the aspect ratio that uh, I need. <clears throat> and uh, that's about 1 to 1.27 inches. And uh, so I, uh, I'll show you here the cropped version. I didn't take a lot off of it, but I did zoom in a little and uh, cropped more off of the left than I did the right. And uh, so I think this is, uh, will make a decent composition. Um, it's a gray winter scene with a little bit of warmth in it. So I'll try to uh, preserve that and uh, kind of give it some warmth as well. I'll show you the grid. This is my uh, four by five grid, which fits nicely on an 11 by 14 canvas so it helps you uh, to sketch in these areas if you uh, want to follow the sketch or if you want to just follow the uh, this this particular image you can uh, use this to sketch from and also as you know I do uh, a value map and uh, so what's a value map basically I take the big objects in a in a composition and try to uh, get them into three or four values, a light value, a light mid value, a dark mid value, and a dark value, if I want four. Uh, this one has about four. Um, it's kind of awkward with this, with this big tree on the right hand side and having the snow on top of it, it makes it a little hard to get uh, good values. But I have a lot of snow in this scene and so I'm going to be able to uh, uh, use that, put some shadows in and, and that sort of thing, show some snow on the, uh, on the uh, branches as well. And if you've been watching uh, the broadcast for the last 10 or 15 minutes, uh, you'll, you'll see the sketch here that I used as a rough sketch. I didn't try to sketch in every tree in the background. We'll uh, ad lib that as we get to it and, uh, and hopefully it, it uh, will work well. Um, hello, Louisa from South Africa. Welcome, glad you're here. Thank you for joining. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to head back over now to my easel and I'll go through the brushes and paints with you, um, show you uh, a couple of the things I want to tell you about and then we'll get started. So uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back here now at my uh, easel and uh, we're ready to go. You see the top of my easel as always I have my uh, uh, photograph here, my uh, photograph I'm using, my cropped version. And then I also have my value sketch over there that I keep at the top of my easel that keeps reminding me of the values that I want to try to achieve in the various parts of this painting. So the value map is really sort of like a puzzle that pieces interlock and fit together and uh, try to get the darkest areas sort of in the vertical, particularly in a landscape. Um, uh, the sky is usually lighter in a snow scene. It's a little bit different, um, but uh, we'll go through that and uh, I'll uh, talk about it as we go through it. Let me go back now to my palette and my paints and uh, I want to tell you the paints here. We're using a sort of a reduced palette today. Um, as you know, I use uh, Bob Ross paints and uh, I have them on here, but I only have a, about five or six, seven of the, of the paints that I normally use. Um, this is a little bit like a Zorn palette, Z-O-R-N. Anders Zorn was a Danish uh, painter who used a very limited palette. Um, there's a lot of disagreement on what was in his palette, but uh, for sure he had white, um, he had black, and he had uh, 
a version of cadmium red and then he used ochre and he could make about any color a lot of colors with that uh, on his palette and his paintings are well known today for that so what i have here my reduced palette is titanium white i put a little phthalo blue in here that's not truly a zorn color he rarely had blue he made some uh, Historians say he had cerulean blue in his palette, but uh, most of them I see he didn't. I have a black. This is a midnight black from Bob Ross. I have a couple of warm browns here, Van Dyke brown and a dark, uh, dark sienna. Uh, from, and I also have alizarin crimson and I have yellow ochre. And I also have my uh, ultramarine violet here. So uh, th this is a Grumbach color here, the ultramarine violet. The rest are Bob Ross paints. And uh, as you know, that's typically what I use for my for my painting uh, palette. And then I also have a little bit of uh, Winsor Newton Liquin here, which is a, a medium that helps the paint dry uh, faster. And then I have uh, the typical Bob Ross liquid white here, which helps the paints dry slower. So uh, depending on what I want to do, I can kind of speed up the drying or slow down the drying. Both of them give me the ability to get a nice slick surface and get to get the paints rolling on the paint on the canvas very well. Um, also want to talk to you briefly about uh, some brushes. I got a new set of brushes this week. Um, you've heard me talk about treckle brushes. That's how I pronounce it. I found out this week it's pronounced treckel, T-R-E-K-E-L-L. -L. And uh, so I've, I've got a a series of new brushes, new uh, flats, and new uh, filberts, some rounds, and I've been using them for a couple years, um, but this is their new new version set. These are the uh, Legion 9100 synthetic mongoose brushes, and I just love them. Um, they're much better than some of the harder, um, harder uh, bristle brushes that you typically see, and so um, I've I get stuck on those and I kind of like them. Uh, one more thing about Trekel, Trekel you should know is that uh, I have a, a little bit of a relationship with them that if you want to buy their brushes, you go to their website. If you buy s some products from them, everything except paints, uh, you can get a 10% uh, reduction if you use a discount code that I will give you in the description below here. Um, so uh, you may want to check that out as well. If you get ready to buy some new brushes, you want to try these uh, brushes from uh, from Trakel, uh, give, it a, give it a shot. And uh, they give me a few pennies if you buy something through that discount code, but you still get 10% discount. So anyway, that's my commercial for today. Um, I also uh, want to welcome, I think, a new artist named Tim Longwell, who might be watching. If he is, I'd like to uh, hear him tell me through the chat window here. But uh, he uh, has an oil painting uh, a channel and uh, we're members of the creative arts collaboration and uh, we kind of got acquainted today and uh, so I would like for him to uh, get some of your uh, uh, some of you can look at his channel and watch him paint some oil paintings as well if you uh, really like oil so um, with that said I think that's all I want to tell you right now uh, I'm going to zoom in on my controls here get myself lined up so I can uh, get going on this thing and uh, a little bit I want to make sure you can see everything um, I want to make sure that it's I want to go the other way so I can get myself out of the picture as much as possible right about there and then I'm going to uh, put my palette on in the lower right corner so you can watch me pick up my paints and uh, watch me do this painting so uh, I want to check out my chat room here and see who else is uh, talking to me um, Louisa from South Africa, Longwell Arts, Southeast Oklahoma. Well, welcome, Tim. Glad you're here. Um, David Parker from the UK. Uh, it's great to, great to see everybody here. We have typically have an international audience here because uh, for some reason my one o'clock in the afternoon US, US time is uh, <laughs> better for people in the uh, UK than in, in Europe than it is for people in the, the States, particularly if you're uh, not retired like I am. So anyway, uh, let's get going. Uh, I want to uh, double check my, everything's recording. I have my three cameras going, four cameras actually going. And uh, so I'm gonna start with a little bit of this liquid white and uh, uh, put a little bit of uh, background on here. And I want the background, I'm just gonna go ahead and add the, uh, some of my uh, midnight black here and uh, get a sort of a gray. This has a, this is overall gray, sort of a gray painting. Uh, 
almost the color of the uh, canvas here. Um, so I'm using a number six, 16 uh, flat, Trekel flat uh, brush. And uh, put this on here. Liquid white helps that paint go on a lot smoother. Uh, I want it to come down into these trees here. Uh, I want it to be sort of gray. This is a, a gray day. And uh, we're going to put a little bit of uh, my, I've got my violet, ultraviolet out here. So uh, we're going to use that to get sort of the atmospheric perspective that we like to get and to show some depth in these uh, paintings. And uh, this should be a nice, might be a fairly quick painting actually, uh, depending on how much time I want to spend on all these leaves and or trees and tree trunks and all this stuff that's going on here. There's a ton of stuff that I could spend time on uh, painting in all these branches and all this stuff. I probably won't spend that much time because I don't want to bore you too much. Um, but um, it's the kind of thing that you could work on and let it dry and come back and work on it some more. And, uh, and then uh, put in tons of, of uh, branches and trees, tree trunks and all that sort of stuff. Um, so I'm just sort of putting a little bit of an underlayer back here, under underpainting, if you will. Uh, Want to get more dark in it, darken it up just a little. Um, Scarpies here, hello, Sonia from Buford, Georgia. Welcome. Okay, uh, I'm getting a good audience today. Um, so uh, yeah, I uh, lived in the Midwest and Upper Midwest for most of my life, most of my career. In the uh, certainly in the colder areas of the country and so this time of the year it was always uh, getting cold and colder and getting snow and plus I like to go to places that have scenes like this we like to go to uh, Montana as you know I do a lot of paintings from Montana uh, and uh, so the winter scenes still attract me and uh, I like to uh, um, paint those kind of things. All the scenery in Florida here is pine trees and actually we have some oak trees and many many different kinds of pine trees in Florida. Um, a lot of water and uh, so I uh, do that some here in Florida but basically it's uh, I like to paint from photographs. I have the ability to sort of construct my own um, composition that way. If I have a, com if I have a good photograph to work from, I can uh, do some uh, creative artistic license uh, copying and not copying, but uh, creating. I'm putting in a few things that look like they might be some clouds up here, a little bit of this, uh, uh, this midnight black and Bob Ross's color actually turns a little, a little violet, a little purple here. Uh, but I want to keep it light. I want it to be the second lightest thing in the in the painting. Um, I'm going to have some more of that color down here. I'm just going to throw in just a few things to remind me that that's the color that goes here. It's the same same as the sky, but it's really an icy icy patch on the water here in this area. Um, pick up some more of my liquid white. It'll flow a lot better. Um, so I'll just remind myself that that's the icy patch down there. Okay, um, so much for that. That's pretty much the sky, and I want to put a lot more in there. Uh, just leave some nice brush strokes, uh, things that look like some clouds. You can make some curves, that type of thing. This is not really in the photograph, but it gives some interest to the sky. You've heard me talking before about don't have a lot of open space without something going on. Don't have a uh, even on an 11 by 14 painting like this, uh, if you have big sections up here that have nothing going on, it gets boring very fast and you want to try to give your viewer something to, to look at uh, rather than just a boring gray or white sky. Um, you remember my two inch rule, I have a uh, thing called a viewfinder here and you've seen me use this before, but 
if I take it and go across my painting, I want to see something going on across everywhere I put this viewfinder. So if I go across here and it's all just one color, I know I need something else there, but I also know I'm going to be putting some trees over this, so I'm not too worried about that right now. But this sky area up here, um, I don't want it to be all one color or all one value. Okay, um, so just touch a few more darks in here. When I look at this, I have a monitor here behind me, and I can see pretty much what you're seeing, and uh, I can see what the cameras are picking up. And uh, so if it doesn't look like it's got enough uh, paint in it, I'll usually come back and touch it up. So that's a little bit of a sort of a threatening type sky, maybe. At least there's some, some movement there, some clouds. All right. Um, now, what are we going to do with this? I haven't cleaned out my brush yet. I'm going to put my uh, liquid white aside, and I'm going to pick up this, this violet now, ultraviolet, ultramarine violet, um, and put just a little bit of my um, a white there, my liquid white. I want it to change colors a little bit as it comes forward. I don't want it to be the same color as what's in the background, but I do want to have it uh, about about a little bit darker value, not the same value. But back here, we're gonna start putting in some things that look like some trees and some things going on in the background back here. Um, gonna have to get a little more violet in there. Um, these trees actually in the photograph are sort of a brownish color, but the, the brownish color doesn't give me really much depth. Um, I want to fool the eye. I want you to think about these trees being really pretty far off. Um, so I'm, I'm making more depth in this painting than is in the photograph. Um, so I'll put in a mixture of this violet. Again, my, notice my brush stroke. I'm going upwards. I'm just sort of putting in this background layer of trees here, and I'm using this violet ultraviolet color that's been thinned down quite a bit uh, to uh, make you believe I'm fooling you. I'm using atmospheric perspective here and I'm making you think there's a whole lot of trees back here when I haven't painted one tree. I'm just basically pushing little um, abstract impressionistic shapes up into the sky. And if I can change those colors, if I can get a mixture of uh, darks, mid values, and lights, I'll be giving you some depth back here. As well as atmospheric perspective, I'm trying to give you some depth in these trees so there's not all one, not all one uh, value going on here. Some are lighter, some are darker. Um, I think I'm going to put some of these over here. Okay, so now I'm getting some real depth in this thing. If you can notice how this, this is uh, looking like it's pretty far away. There might be some fogginess back here. Um, very different than the photograph. Um, that's the thing you have to learn about painting from photographs. One of the things that people say they don't like to paint from photographs um, because they deceive you. The photographs will usually give you an accurate color, but they don't necessarily give you accurate values, um, or ac values that would look good in a, in a painting. Uh, because if you want the kind of depth that I'm trying to give you here, you have to do something like I'm doing here with this, these colors. You have to get some, either a blue or, or lavender or violet or something in the distance to give yourself some depth because it's an optical illusion we're creating here. And optical illusions are really all paintings about. You're trying to make something look three-dimensional that is actually two-dimensional. Okay. By the way, if any of you have any questions, please put them in the uh, chat window. I monitor the chat window up here. It's at my left elbow. And uh, I can uh, I check it every so often to see if there's any new questions. If so, I will try to answer. And uh, 
if I can't answer, I'll tell you I don't know the answer. Okay, so that's looking like a good bit of depth. Now, what I want to do is I want to bring another la layer forward. Uh, and so I'm going to clean out my brush, and I'm going to start with some of this uh, reddish-brown color. Now I'm going to pick up some of my uh, dark sienna and put a little uh, midnight or dark Van Dyke brown in there. And uh, I'm going to do something similar. I'm still using a big 16-inch brush. I haven't changed my brush. So we're going to come forward, so I'm going to start putting in a few more trees that look like they're branches floating off of some more trees back here. But changing the color, if I make them slightly darker, they'll come forward. They have to be a value slightly darker than that uh, violet background that you see there. So I really putting in a another layer of uh, of trees here. And those trees are probably really there, they just don't show up in the photograph like I'm painting them. Because photographs, digital photographs, they work, digital cameras are wonderful inventions, but their computer algorithm that actually tries to capture a scene on a 3 eighths, 3 eighths inch piece of uh, silicon which is what the chip is in those cameras, uh, really has trouble. They have, to, uh, they have to average out the values. So you can demonstrate that by looking at the, uh, by taking something bright. You can take your camera and point it at something bright, and it will darken everything else around it down. Um, and it's just the computer uh, chip software making it trying to average out the values so there's not big extreme values in any photograph you take. And it turns a lot of things that are dark, it'll turn them almost black. So you've probably heard me talk about that before. I won't bore you with it anymore, but uh, we are going to get some tree branches and things floating out here like this coming out from these trees on the left side. Uh, this thing has a nice lot of really fine branches sticking out. So, you see, I haven't, other than that sky, I haven't used this brush like this at all. I'm basically pushing up, you let the bristles do the painting, and sort of hitting and missing so that, so that I have this uh, very nice, loose, impressionistic look to these tree branches. Yeah, I, Heather, I see your comment there. Um, yeah, they, they, I, when I'm out painting on location, uh, I always like to take photographs of what I'm trying to paint because uh, one thing about plein air painting, if you've ever done it, <laughs> it uh, things change very quickly in plein air. Uh, the values change, the light changes, and I had one time I was trying to paint a scene of a marina and I was across the river from this marina and uh, started painting this boat and this little uh, um, restaurant and uh, I got about half done with my painting and the people come out of the restaurant get on the boat and they take off so my whole my whole scene <laughs> was basically ruined All right, so I'm, I'm picking up a few darker values and sticking them in here. And you see what that does? That gives depth to this. Even though I'm not painting a lot of trees, it looks like a lot of trees. And every little bristle on this brush I've got here is a, uh, is a paintbrush. And uh, yeah, Scarpy, that thing about the cameras, that's, uh, that's uh, something you need to be concerned with because if you... Uh, can take a take a camera. I can probably even demonstrate it on uh, on this camera here if I had the ability to take a the digital cameras do the same thing. If I cover cover this up, it'll it changes the it changes the value of what the camera sees. Uh, see the difference? 
that's the digital chip inside this camera changing the values of, of what you're seeing. Um, and it's all because they have a sort of an alver averaging algorithm in there that basically makes them uh, um, change the, the values. And it, it makes, depending on what's up close to the camera, if it's light and bright, um, it will uh, darken other things down. If it's dark, it will lighten other things up. Okay, let's see here. I want to get moving. Um, put some more back in here. Um, we have a lot. I'm going down to this area here with trees, but I want to put in some more uh, snow and stuff back there in the background, in the middle ground, I guess it is. So I'm getting a very uh, good set of trees back here and getting a good underpainting. I'm trying to leave this one big tree alone over here a little bit so I can remember where it is. That's why I didn't talk to you about that. Uh, people, this is your first time. Uh, you notice I'm painting on a gray, gray gesso canvas. Um, I do that because I, uh, I want to have a reference for mid value. So I know if a value needs to be uh, darker than mid value, it's got to be darker than my canvas value. So I use uh, um, a gray gesso um, actually comes from Bob Ross but you can get any kind of gesso as long as it's a mid mid value gray and just uh, I use a one of these foam brushes that you buy at uh, one of the hardware store or buy it at Lowe's or Home Depot or somewhere for painting around trim around your house and uh, I use that to uh, paint these canvases and then uh, I use that uh, a transfer paper when I get my sketch, I put my sketch on uh, transfer, on, on tracing paper actually, I do it on tracing paper because it's easy to manipulate, it's light, I can uh, um, manage it and I can also um, use it over the canvas. So then I put my uh, transfer paper by Soral. It has it comes in white backgrounds and gray backgrounds and uh, all of that and uh, so I put that on and I just trace my uh, sketch over this canvas and lo and behold I have um, white white on my canvas if I wanted to do the sketch itself I actually uh, have I showed you this before I use uh, charcoal white a pencil and I can put this stuff on myself if I want to do that. Uh, but uh, usually I'll just work out a sketch and erase until I get the perspective right and get it uh, the way I want it. And uh, then I just uh, trace it onto here. So uh, I'm starting to change my brush stroke a little bit. You notice instead of pushing up, I'm starting to pull up now. So I'm getting a different texture on the front of this brush different texture on these areas where I've got trees and that sort of thing. I put a little bit more of that violet in there and it's uh, darkening up things. I'm trying to leave some room to remind me to put some bigger trees back there. Um, there we go. Something like that. All right. That gives me a nice uh, good middle ground there. Um, over here, what have I got going on? I got a bunch of stuff going on over here too. A whole bunch of trees that are more, a little more red in them. So I'm going to use more of this uh, uh, dark, dark sienna. I'm changing the color slightly, you can see. Um, More red. <clears throat> These are almost totally covering up the, the sky. Uh, Scarpy, I see your question there. I wonder if artists would be open to improvements in painting that would facilitate quicker painting, like to help with the plein air con constant changing issue. Yeah, well, you know, uh, I, 
talk about Bob Ross, he gets kind of poo-pooed by serious artists. They think he was not really a, a great artist, but uh, he invented paints and brushes and stuff that he had to use when he did his painting uh, sessions. He did uh, 400 and some uh, videos on PBS and uh, he had to learn how to do those videos in 27 minutes and he did a large large canvases uh, in 27 minutes. So this whole thing with liquid white, uh, one of the reasons he used that is because he had to get a full canvas covered. He had to do it in 27 minutes and uh, he had to come up with a full painting that people, he couldn't just do a half painting. Uh, he had to do a full complete painting in that amount of time. So he learned how to do it very fast. Um, and I don't know if that's why other artists kind of put him down a little bit. I don't know, but uh, uh, a lot of artists think that he, he uh, wasn't that, uh, s not serious, but uh, apparently they don't give him good, uh, good ratings. At least that's what I learn in reading about him. But uh, the guy uh, taught a lot of people to paint and he took a lot of the, lot of the uh, fear away from painting. Uh, and uh, so people like me, who was not trained in painting, I had no art classes at all. Uh, I basically learned how to paint initially from, I did take one oil painting class in way back, and, uh, but he took enough fear away from it for me to uh, try to do this myself, and so I've picked up some of his techniques. I've actually taught his techniques in some places, but uh, he does paint very fast. And so people that uh, have followed him using these big brushes, he had the big brushes he invented. He basically uh, had to do it because of his time schedule on his TV show. So anyway, uh, I don't know what you could do for outdoor painting. You can't stop the earth from rotating. You can't stop the sun from moving or the clouds from coming in when you're painting outdoors, but uh, you can use paints that uh, dry. I mean, uh, acrylic painters, a lot of acrylic painters like to paint outdoors because acrylics dry fast and uh, they, uh, you can paint right over them as soon as they dry. So when you're outside, you can, you can get some nice uh, uh, realistic effects with uh, acrylics. Uh, I, I haven't used acrylics much. I've tried a, a few of them. I'm putting in some other colors here, folks. I stopped talking about what paints I'm using. If you're watching my brush, you can see uh, I'm putting in a little, little uh, uh, this, pulling in some of this uh, uh, ultraviolet over here. Let's see, I want to get, and this comes down. There's water down here. So I'm coming to the bank. Um, this bank. You notice I've only washed my brush out once and I've done everything with this 16 flat brush. One brush. Maybe that's a marketing gimmick. One brush painting. <laughs> I want to get some more white in there. You see the white, you can see the white of the snow coming up in, in the, and it also tells you this is sort of a, is, is leading down into the water, right? Um, other areas over here have some snow in them. Got some uh, bushes over here. I'm going to paint over those, um, over this way. And there's more snow, more areas over here that have snow in them, uh, back in here. So I'll be putting in some of that. This is a, um, area where the, the background sort of leads right down into this creek, if you will. Put that in, I'll come back and paint some trees over that, but basically I want to get that laid in here above. There's a big snow, there's actually a, uh, if, you can, if you could see it, if you could have seen it in the uh, photograph, it might have been hard for you to see that. Um, but there's a, uh, like a wall. This is like really a park and there's park benches out here and there's snow on top of this wall. Um, so uh, I'm going to just put in a few things that look like snows setting back in here. Get a paint around this brush, this tree. 
Okay, so the, the angle of this stroke is telling you how the, how the land is laying. So it looks now like that's coming down. Anything that uh, would, any snow or water would run down to this creek. Um, and uh, I can come back and lighten that up, put some more uh, bright areas in there. Again, you don't have to have a tiny brush to do this necessarily although it might be good. I've got a, uh, a, lot of, a lot of white on this brush. Let's see, that's okay there. All right, I think I'm going to uh, just put a few more things over here to sort of look like we've got snow in between these trees over this way. Um, and I can just sort of soften it in this brush. These brushes are uh, so nice and soft. They're not hard like uh, some of the heavy bristle brushes are. I'd never heard of synthetic mongoose, but uh, one of my painter friends and had told me about them, and I said, where'd you get them? And she said, trekowl.com. So I started trying them and so now we have a relationship with Trekel. All right, so I just keep running over this with extra colors to sort of shape the bank back here. This bank is coming down into the water. When we get to the water, I'll be able to tell you another little secret about water that water in the winter time is rarely blue. You've heard me talk about water before, that it's water has no color. Water takes on the color that's above it, around it, or under it. So, um, you have to be cognizant of that. And so in the winter time, a lot of times you'll see streams in the winter that are just almost black. And this was no, this is no uh, exception. This particular photograph has uh, water that's, that's very dark. All right, let's see, let's get moving here. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, Tim, that, uh, Bob Ross was underestimated. He was a lot better artist than a lot of people gave him credit for, but uh, I'm a member of, a, of an art guild here in Florida, and uh, I told somebody when I joined, I said, well, I kind of use Bob Ross techniques on some of my paintings. I use some of his, his uh, paints and brushes and so forth, and I get this little turned up nose look. You know, it's like, oh, he wasn't a very good painter, was he? It's like, no, he was, it's probably better than anybody in this art guild, that's for sure. Uh, so, uh, see if I can put in a few, these background trees, or I guess they're kind of middle ground here. Let's uh, uh, put in a few things going like this. I can basically show you I've got trees in front of this snow, so that it's not like the snow is there all by itself. I've got tons of trees back here got uh, big ones and a little bit wider ones. Got one here that's sort of good size. Um, so we'll just flip in a few of these. I don't want to overdo it right now. I can come back and put in some more if I feel it needs it. But let's uh, just pop these in right here and uh, give you some a little bit of depth. Um, Something like that. This brush is almost too wide. It's a very, it's a size four, but I'm using it on the uh, edge to sort of put it in that way. Okay, so now you're seeing, because I put that lighter color value under there, it's snow. You're seeing now trees in front of it. And it looks like we've got 
a lot of woods back here. All right, um, let me go over here and do a few more on this side over here. I've got sort of an area that's left out right here so far. Let's throw in a few vertical trees. Try to keep them as vertical as possible. Again, they have to be a little bit darker than what's under it um, or you'll end up with uh, not being able to see them. So just flick in some trees here. Uh, mixture of lights and darks and mid values. And I can come back over that and, and stipple in some, some leaves and that sort of thing. There's a lot of uh, dead uh, oak leaves hanging out around this thing. And then all these sort of go out into these soft uh, trees up there. All right, um, let me see if that's enough for that. All right, so I've got it down now to the about halfway done with this. Um, there's a big, a lot of bushes in here. I'm getting the snow here. All right. All right. Um, through here, this is all going to be. I'm going to stick with my uh, flat brushes, pick up some liquid white, and come over here and uh, get some more snow. And uh, we're going to just start painting in this area here. Now this is kind of loose paint. It's uh, got liquid white in it, so it's, it's nice and runny. Uh, we'll paint around this tree here. So what I'm really painting is this uh, fence-like, not fence, but it's, a, it's actually a barricade. It's like a uh, concrete block or something like that that's covered with snow. Okay. Now see, that's brighter. Why? Because it's not in the shade or shadow. It's, it's out here in the middle of this field. Don't want to lose my trees there that are behind that. It's almost pure titanium. I have just a modest amount of tone in it, not much. Uh, but um, I want it to come around this tree over here, fully paint around this tree so I can lay that big old tree in. And it comes over here, and there's some bushes around. It's got some uh, a bank that sticks out here, like this. I'll just sort of rough this in right now, and uh, going to be able to see that hopefully. Because I put a little bit of that liquid white in here, uh, I, it's it's flowing nicely on this canvas. Uh, very easily. Okay. I'm going to step back, take a couple seconds, and just look at this to see if I'm capturing the scene the way I want to. Um, it's got, certainly got a lot more depth than the uh, photograph, that's for sure. And uh, that's what I want to do. This area here I'm leaving open right in here has uh, some uh, bushes in it and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, plein air painting, you paint probably a little different than this, uh, <clears throat> Lisa. Yeah, thanks for the comment you would probably use a different you try to try to get in the values at least to get in the uh, where the shadows are and where the big shapes are when you're doing plein air painting and uh, Daisy hello Daisy good to see you here tell us where you're from again Daisy Let's 
see, I want to make sure if uh, I get my palette underneath the painting here, please notify me on the chat window. I keep my palette in the lower right corner of this painting and uh, sometimes I get so involved with the painting I forget to uh, move it for you guys watching live. When I re-edit this video and make it, uh, put a new version out there, I always follow it and fix it, but uh, right now you want to be able to see it. I'm having a little problem with my hand cramping up, folks. I uh, don't know why that is, but uh, it is. I may have to go left-handed here on you. That'll be an interesting thing. Have you ever tried that? Change your painting style to go from one hand to the other. I'm left-handed right now, folks. Um, putting some snow in over here. Um, fortunately, I'm not having to paint a, anything really detailed. But uh, one way to get some abstract shapes for sure, right? Daisy from Pakistan, that's right. Welcome. So nice to have a global following here. I'm sure you see snow scenes in Pakistan somewhere. Um, all right, I'm gonna keep going left-handed here. I stopped to take a drink of water. That usually helps my cramping because I think I get dehydrated to some extent here. So we're just popping in the snow here, some of the snow that's uh, around this stream. I want this stream to be zigzagged because I want to show you the depth. And uh, so that's what's happening here. So I'm getting a good bit of uh, texture in this paint. Uh, this is all, let's see, this. This is all snow clear out to here, yeah. So I'll put in some more of that. Maybe a little more liquid white, thin it up. Liquid white just thins it down enough so that it really moves. See how smoothly that moves on the canvas? Just really covers. Well, it also is, it thins out the paint so that you can see the little bit of my gray uh, canvas coming through but uh, I can always go back over that. Once I get the canvas covered, it's not a problem. Go back over it. So this is all snow here. You just pop that in a little bit. And this is an area where I had, a, uh, had some of the ice growing here. I want to Mix that together with this color. Yeah, we're doing pretty good. We're doing on time, huh? 50 minutes. Well, we are going to go over an hour, Tim. So, uh, had a little discussion with my uh, artist I met today in the <clears throat> Creative Arts Collaboration. We were talking about how long a painting should be. and. Uh, so I told him I, I just paint until the painting's done and hope you guys stay with me and watch it. So I still have a pretty good complement of viewers here watching me. So uh, he was worried about how long his painting should be or whether he should uh, do time lapse and speed it up. Uh, you folks have talked to me, some of you have talked to me about that, whether you like that or not. If you want to put something in a chat window to Tim, let him know what you like and what you don't like about uh, the length of paintings on YouTube and whether you like to see people go all the way through from start to finish, kind of like I do, or you like to see them faster, you don't have enough time to watch them, I don't know, I uh, haven't really taken a survey of my viewers, I just sort of do what I do and hopefully people stay with me. Um, so uh, 
Tell Tim what you think. All right, um, a lot of snow here. All right, so I've got a good covering underpainting here of this snow and areas where I want to have, there's a couple of uh, logs in here. All right, um, over this area on the back side of this, let's see, I gotta make sure I have my, I leave room for my top of my wall over there. that mm, probably getting just a little bit of uh, running out of canvas over there or running out of uh, area to view and it started painting underneath my palette camera all right all right now so that's a lot of my snow that I need and so if I come back now and put layers on top of this I'll start getting nice um, texture on this canvas. Okay, Louisa from South Africa, thanks. I uh, always wonder whether it takes me too long and if you get tired of watching me or don't have the time. So many people are pressured for time anymore, it's hard to to know what uh, what to do, what they like, and what they got time for, but uh, I just sort of try to do my thing, and hopefully stay with me. All right. Um, so this is just um, merging of these back here in the background a little bit. Actually, you can maybe show you the this little. Uh, row back there that's a like a fence a little barricade to keep people from falling in the in this river I guess okay now I'll come back and if I don't forget I'll put a little bit of a light snow cap right on that thing um, over here I got the same kind of thing going on there's a little bit of a gray fencing going on here. I'm making it more brown. It's kind of coming out gray, but uh, it's a brownish gray. Um, it sort of lines this bank here like this. There's some rocky things up there. They're broken. I don't know what they are up here, but there's some things that look like they're pieces of rock or maybe it's part of this barricade that's broken off, I don't know. There's a bit of a little barricade there and a bit of a barricade there. And then underneath here we have some very dark, darker than that actually. It's the bank. Darker, darker. So I'm just giving you a little bit of a shadow here to see the bank. It's not quite covered with snow and uh, hopefully that's leaving a good impression there. Um, well, I got this, I might as well come over here and do the same thing in this area. There's a, 
a bit of a bank that goes here. I'm not trying to make it perfectly straight. I'm not trying to make it uh, like I would do it with a T-square or something like that. I want it to have this sort of loose as it has the snow may have blown and flown, gotten over some of these edges and places. Um, even back here, there's some places that need some shadows. The bank. Okay. Um, little vertical marks. Um, let's see, let me get my palette for you in another spot. So I can paint back here and you can just follow me. I just love the way these brushes react. Okay, I see you're getting some feedback, Tim. I appreciate all my viewers helping you with that. So, nice to get a chance to hear what other people like and don't like. All right, um, I haven't painted that stream, but it's right there, you can see it. Um, all right, while I got this brush here, I'm gonna get some dark brown and black and whatever here, and I'm gonna see if I can pop in this uh, big old tree over here. <laughs> you might know I would do that as soon as I put my palette over that quadrant of the canvas. Okay, there's part of it. I'm still using big brushes, folks. I haven't used anything smaller than a 14 brush here today. These things have branches that come out like that. There's another little one that comes over like this. Um, I'm using some of this uh, dark or midnight black and a little bit of Van Dyke brown. It gives me probably the darkest darks I can get a hold of. So I don't know if I want to put in all these branches. I think I'll get too busy if I do. Um, So I'm making that just a little wider to cover my canvas back there. <coughs> so it's looking like sort of a winter, very wintry scene. I think there's another couple of branches that kind of go up like that. Make that a little bit wider maybe. up there. I think that looks better than just making it. All right, a lot of branches, a lot of places to put snow. All right. Not too bad for a big old fat 14 inch brush. All right, now. I'm going to lighten that up just a little with some of my um, dark sienna. Put a few textures on there.
Okay, there we go. All right. So I'm washing out this brush. I think this is the second time I washed out a brush today. Okay. Um, all right, got some more trees in here. Um, let me see, what else can I do with here? I think that's about all I want to do with that until I get ready to put some snow on it. Um, just a smaller brush here. Let's see. Let me get my flat here. This is actually a bright. Um, it has uh, long bristles on it, and uh, put, put that in here a little bit, trying to get this thinner. All right, um, back there, oh, I know what I wanted to do. I've got this uh, um, sort of bushes over here that sort of have some reddish orange in them. I'm going to mix up. I'm using a filbert now. Get some ochre out and uh, there's a few sort of a reddish type brushes, bushes that are in this area here. That's almost too too bright. Darken that down just a little. So I'm using alizarin and uh, ochre trying to get a color that comes close to what's out there in this little uh, set of bushes that are sitting here along the bank, going up into this area like this. Like that. Picking up some uh, ochres and more ochre. Here. So this is where I'm getting some of the warmth from. I'm picking up some of these uh, ochres and a bit of reds. Same type of brush stroke I used before where I'm just flipping up. Sorry, I had you covered up, folks. You don't have to look at my revised edited version. That's that. Um, there's some more down here in this area. Darken them down just a little. They're a little bit too light there. Something like that. All right. Let's lay that brush here. Go back and get my snow brush here and see if I can sort of blend this together now a little bit. You don't want to leave those bottoms of those hanging. You want to see this area right here, if you can see it very closely, it's all ragged from where I pushed up on that brush. But if I can come back and now connect that to the snow by just putting in a few things like this, all of a sudden I've buried that in the snow and it doesn't look like it's glued on, which is what happens a lot of times. People will glue things on there. Look like they're glued on and they're not connected to anything. So I got this area here. I'm putting on some pretty heavy, just pure titanium white paint over this. There's some other areas that have, have that. Um, Okay, back there in the background again, I'm going to hit some more. I have a little bit of warmth in this brush, so I'm just going to use that, sort of spread some, some of the warmth. I picked up just a little bit of this ochre when I went under these bushes, and I'm pulling it back into this area, almost by accident, but I like it because it warms up that section of the painting. Okay, I got another brush to put down. Here we go. I 
Now we're getting about ready to have to put this water in. When I do that, we'll be done. All right. Um, the water, what color is it? Well, Tim, it looks like you're getting a few uh, good comments and maybe even some new subscribers. That's a good deal. Always fun to help support another artist. Just as long as you don't leave me, folks. Don't leave me for Tim. Just kidding. If he's better, go watch him. Okay, uh, let's see here. Let's. Uh, I'm going to start on this uh, water now, and I'm going to start seeing if I can get that color. It's. Uh, I'm going to try to put more uh, the black. It's going to be a dark color. I'm going to put a little violet in it, black, mostly black, and maybe a little bit of uh, the Van Dyke here, and see what happens if I put it in back here. What color is water today? Water is almost black. Well, see, we want to help Tim get some more subscribers so he can get above that. I think it's the 1,000 threshold, Tim, as you're trying to achieve. Because you get more, more uh, goodies or credibility or something with YouTube once you pass 1,000. So uh, if you guys can help him get a few more subscribers, that's great to do. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put most of this in in this color. I may lighten it, start lightening it up a little bit now as we come forward, but uh, I uh, want this to be uh, probably a little too light, but it's got to be darker than uh, the surrounding area here. A little darker than that, maybe, folks. See right here. A little snow right there. All right. Um, if I can move my palette to another area for you. Over here, we're starting. I think we're going to get a little more brown in there. For some reason, I see more brown showing up in this water for some reason. I don't know if it's because it's maybe it's a little ochre that's getting here might be some of the reflection of these colors on the bank, I don't know. Put some uh, white in here. All right, we're making good progress. How are we doing on time? An hour and ten minutes about. So. I'm going to finish this up in a pretty short order if we can. Appreciate all you guys staying with me today. It's been fun. Getting all this canvas covered and then we'll come back and put highlights on and change it up a little bit.
make this corner darker. Got some snow we're gonna bump up against this. Back here, this is, uh, that was my uh, gray that I put in there earlier. Let's see, right in here. Yeah. Okay, so I want to get this smoother here because I want it to look a little bit more like ice in some areas, which I think is what is in this photograph. Back here, this is all rushing water. Um, so it has some, some ripples in it and some things going on. It's making it, uh, there we go, something like that. Okay, um, how are we doing here? Let's see. I don't know if that's a rock or what that is out there. Could be a rock. Why don't we make it a rock? All right. Okay, folks, um, I'm going to put some more snow down over this. This area here is a little bit too gray for me. I want to uh, smooth it out a little bit more. And, uh, and a few more touch-ups on this uh, water. Try to get a few more light areas. If I can get some dry brush, you know what dry brush is? That's where you just sort of scumble along the top here. Really keep the brush almost flat to the canvas like this, and we'll see if this works right in here. Okay, so I gave it some roughness there, some. That's where it's getting pushed around. It's got some movement in it, which is really what I want to try to do. If I keep going over that now, I'll run it. So I'm going to stop, but I want to come back and get some more dark. Got to have some more dark along this bank over here to help separate the snow or the water from the, uh, the bank. It's going to be darker all along here. a little better. Yeah, Tim, I'm really glad you joined us today. It's great to have another person watching and who's going through some of the same things I am with YouTube and we can collaborate and commiserate or whatever we have to do. Okay, there's that. All right. Um, yeah, these little uh, things there that are some sort of a block, something, I don't know what they are. But uh, All right, let me see here. I want to do some more work now on this tree back here. I've got, I'm going to pick up a smaller brush. I've got a really a, a zero that I'm going to start putting in some snow, see if I can get some snow on top of these branches back here. And uh, see if I can make that look right. It's going to take a lot of I'm not trying to draw in one whole thing with snow. I'm just trying to hit and miss. Hit and miss. Connect some of it together, but hit and miss. Um, just keep going back and getting more paint because you pick up the paint that's there. And uh, A little bit of a something there. It looks like there's some snow, a little bit of a snow valley right here. I'm 
the brush picks up that dark brown that's under there and so I have to come back and restate it like this down here restate it so it's just trying to tell you there's some snow around these branches have some snow on top of them and it's not a uh, There's uh, a lot of other places back here that got snow collecting and some on some branches on the sides of some trees. Um, this actually had a bunch of snow right in here. Something like that. Uh, there's another. Where have you got these little V's? You got a place to collect snow. Something like that. Maybe even right here, just a touch. All right, um, I think I'm going to leave that tree alone for now. I think I'm going to stop with it. Um, I do have a uh, need to put in a few more. I'm going to go back to my browns now and see if I can put in a few of these trees that are sitting out here right in the middle of the snow. There's a tree trunk there. How can having me extend above? Now, here's an example. That looks like that's kind of glued on, doesn't it? I need to come back and and uh, do something to the bottom of that so that it doesn't look like it's glued on. I'm going to take one out of here like this, pull up, add another branch to him or another. Something like that. I really need a smaller brush even yet. This is, uh, I think I got to try one of these rounds. I've got these rounds that uh, might do a little better job. Let me see if I can uh, get some room to work here with my uh, round brush. <laughs> it's not very pointed. I want that to be pointed. Maybe worse than the. Uh, flat for all I know. Yeah, there we go. A little better. These, I can just make them stick right into the, the uh, those bushes there. Um, I have a number of branches over here on this side that sort of come in from the side. They just sort of do this. They just sort of come in like that. And uh, I don't want to forget those. Something like this. Um, got some more places to put some snow. Like that. Um, the other thing we can do is uh, <laughs> I don't want you to forget I have my trusty Bob Ross script liner. That's got a nice tip on it. Yeah, Scarpy, we have a definitely have a worldwide group here watching this. This is great. Um, there's some other trees that kind of come in and go like this. This comes out and goes like that. Thin these down. I've got actually taking my script liner, which is very, very thin, putting thinner on it odorless thinner and the old Bob Ross technique of just using it to do something like this. I'm going to crisscross a few of these. All right, so I, I don't have to put everything in there that's in this painting. Um, I have a couple that kind of go off like this. All right. I don't think I need a whole lot more than that. There's a few that are coming down here that maybe I can put in one or two. Um, it just looks like there's something off the side of the painting. More trees. Um, all right. Um, there's some other little, I don't know what we call them over here. I'm going to put myself some. Uh, 
this color that pick up a little of this uh, brownish ochre here and just throw in a few weeds and things like this. Just flick them in like this. Some over here even. Something like that. Okay. Um, that helps tell the story. Back here, um, we could do the same kind of thing back here. Just flick in a few um, I need it thinner than that. That brush is not uh, needs to be have more th thinner on it. Like that. Uh, it helps bring a little more life to that background right there so it doesn't look like it's just uh, it would have a lot of a lot of growth, a lot of stuff sitting around growing down this way, crisscrossing, something like this. That's almost too dark probably, but I'm going to leave it that way and lighten it up. If I lighten it up, you may not be able to see it. So I do take some chances here with uh, putting things in so you can see them. I know that if they're too dark or if they're too light, they won't show up on the uh, camera so I try to keep that in mind all right Genevieve you're too kind thank you all right we need a little bit of snow on these things right here I'm gonna use my maybe I'm gonna use my uh, script liner if I can get it to work Anybody remember what Bob Ross used to say about a thick paint over a thin paint? If you can't get your paint to thick, thin, or if you can't get your paint to stick, stick, thin it down. Use a liquid white, use some uh, paint thinner, odorless thinner, whatever you have, and it will stick on top of the paint that's thicker. See how that's looking now, a little more. Throwing a few more things here. All right, this is not a heavily snowed in area. It's just got some, uh, okay. I think that background looks pretty nice. Um, Yeah, I've got to put some tufts of grass. Good, good point. Um, let's see here. This little. Well, I got my uh, script liner out here. Um, I can put some around here for sure. It didn't look very good. It looks like it's kind of messy, but. Um, There, up here, even I put in a few things that make it look like there's some something going on there. If I don't like that, I can always come back and uh, use my one of my blender brushes here and sort of take that out or smooth it out. I want to make sure it's there's no uh, other color in there. But um, so you can always one nice thing about oils is you can always come in and correct and. Uh, paint over what you've got. Um, I could put a little bit of a shadow in there even if I wanted to uh, show some a little bit of light coming from one direction or another. Um, it actually also shows some uh, changes in the uh, snow, snow bank. Right? So it helps fill that area in there. All right, I'm getting close to getting done here, folks. Um, I'm going to put in, uh, I've got some grasses, to get a lot of stuff that goes in here yet. Um, so I'm going to come back and put another layer of snow on to make sure I have this as uh, nice as I want it before I cover it with some grasses. 
Um, just pretty much titanium white again. And uh, got a little bit of gray in it, but uh, throw it in here. See, I'm covering up that. I'm seeing the canvas come through there. So I want to try to hit that, make it um, look like I've got some real buildup of snow out here. So we're coming down to the wire here now. So you can see it getting a little lighter because of the, the gray from the canvas underneath is not showing quite as much. Use a lot of paint, a lot of white paint in a snow scene, that's for sure. I'm trying to give this a little bit of a abstract feel there. All right, so this area here, if I you follow my my two inch, two inch square inch rule, I've got a lot of white paint here. Now the photograph has a lot of stuff going on. It's actually got a little log here that's buried with snow. It's got uh, some of these other leaves and uh, not leaves, but um, tufts of grass or whatever. Um, there's a couple of things in here that just look like there's a little log setting here that kind of runs up this way and kind of hidden and then it sticks out and it comes around here. It's got a little circle on the end of it and it comes back and goes back into there. Um, there's other, another log type. Looks like a log, might be a rock for all I know. Back in here. These are something I can come back and put some uh, snow, uh, lighter snow on top of. Um, what do we got? There's a couple more down here. We'll put something down here. I don't know if there's even anything there that's a log or whatever, but I'm going to make it look like a piece of something laying there. All right. Um, I think I want to come back with my round brush and put in some detailed snow on top of these little rocks or whatever they are. Come on here, get that thing rounded. It needs to be whiter almost, really white right here. Something like that. Give it a little texture, give it a little change of value. I picked up all that gray underneath, didn't wipe my brush out. So you get to see me make all these mistakes and then you don't have to make them. Something like that. Come back and restate the lower part of that with something dark, a little darker. All right. It looks like there's some things covered up with snow right here. Whatever they are, rock or whatever. Okay. Um, there's a couple of places out here that have a similar type of uh, something going on. Just throw in some abstract shapes. They don't have to be specifically anything, but just give it something that looks like either a rock or a, something like that. And then I've got a whole bunch of weeds and stuff here in this foreground area. And you know what I'm going to use for that? I'm going to get out my super duper Bob Ross fan brush. That's the one brush I haven't bought from, well I did buy a brush from Trekel. Uh, it was a fan brush, but uh, if I compare them, this one from Trekel on the right is very, very light and flimsy. Uh, it's nice soft, but this is bristle and this has got thousand brushes in it so I'm going to use this for my tufts of snow or not tufts of snow but my uh, <laughs> tufts of grass here and we're going to just sort of pop in a bunch of these like this do that take a take one one stroke come back get some more paint um, like this on here Get some more, lighten it up a little bit. Uh, so that adds a little more warmth to it too that wasn't there. Um, 
and it adds in some uh, nice finishing details. Some of these have a little bit of red streak in it. When you have a fan brush like that, I don't know if you can see it that well, but it's got tons of bristles in there that just go every which way. I think people criticize Bob Ross for saying, oh, he's cheating. He didn't, he didn't paint every one of those little tree trunks by hand like a realist would. But you got to remember, he was doing his stuff in 27 minutes. Okay, put some dark under there to sort of give it a little bit of depth. And um, come back here, a little bit more there. Some of them actually go clear above. All right, um, I think that may be all I want to do in here. I'll get it too messy if I keep messing around. Um, left side, this left corner could use just a little bit of something. I don't want it to be totally left alone over here. All right, something like that. That doesn't have to be, you don't have to paint it exactly this way. Um, but um, I have a nice uh, winter scene here that's got uh, good snow in it. I've got some trees. Did I forget anything I was going to do? I think I did about everything I wanted to do. And if you guys hold on, I'll uh, put my signature on here. You know I do my signature, my block signature, block printing. Left over from my pre-engineering days. So right in here, we're going to put it in. One more. I just have eight letters here. All right. I think that A is a little bit, or the M, I guess. is. All right, folks. Let me see here. Take one look. Um, yeah, I could have could put a few more uh, things over here on the right. Um, kind of cover up that um, this area here. We had a bunch of little things sticking out, but I think other than that, I think I pretty well got this pretty well done. Um, Except you can't see me do that because I have the palette covering that area. Sorry, folks. I have to be the cameraman and the videographer, the uh, production switcher. I have to do all that stuff here. So that's all I really wanted to put over here is some more, a few more things like this. Maybe some stronger ones here that sort of stand out from the fan brush. So that it's not just all all looks the same. The fan brush thing does look all the same there. That's the only disadvantage of it. But uh, we're just throwing a few more jobs like this and say, take my camera, take my palette off. Whoops, wrong way. Go this way. And zoom back and say, Thank you all for watching me. Stay, thanks for staying with me for this amount of time, about an hour and a half. And I really appreciate you being here. And uh, check out uh, Tim Longwell's uh, Facebook page and his, uh, his uh, YouTube channel. And if you like what he's doing, uh, please subscribe to him. Help him get that thousand, uh, thousand subscribers. Um, check out my Facebook page, my website. Uh, this will be re-edited and put on my a YouTube channel after the fact. About three days I'll have it re-edited and uh, I, I'll correct some of the errors with the uh, uh, palette camera and I'll make that a much better a video, probably a little shorter. Um, and uh, subscribe to my page if you haven't already. Tell your friends and let them know that uh, got free oil painting lessons going on here and uh, check it check it in, check in and uh, I would really appreciate it. So. Uh, until I see you again. Oh, also don't forget to check out the description below. I will have in there uh, the special code that you can get 10% off if you want to buy any of these brushes that I was painting with today. And uh, 
it's a, like a one-time offer once a year you can get that so uh, you might want to save up your money and put in a big order and get as much off of it as you can and uh, if not that's no problem either um, I just uh, found these brushes to be very nice and I was able to work out a nice little relationship with uh, Trakel and I appreciate uh, their uh, letting me give you guys a 10% off uh, a code that you can use so uh, that'll be in my uh, video um, other than that I think that's all I want to say so uh, thanks for being here again and until uh, next time this is Larry Hamilton saying so long for now bye bye